Hello and welcome to day one of the Movement Matters Challenge. I don't know if you were able to get to the uh, join us on Sunday uh, at our normal Just Talking time, which is 7 to 8. So um, at that point on Facebook Live, I did a video or I posted a video about what the Movement Matters program is all about. So this is a challenge and what this challenge is going to be is, especially for those of us who are over, you know, 45 and over, um, especially getting closer to 60, sometimes in our head we think that we're 20 and we're not. So uh, to recap what we talked about the last time, hello everybody, is and, and I didn't do any of this on Instagram, so it's going to be over on my Facebook and there's a Facebook group that you can be part of because, so let's start. The one thing I want to do is I want everybody to understand that you're perfectly okay how you are. Hello, Teresa, that you're perfectly okay how you are, where you are. One of the things that we talked about last on Sunday was the fact that, um, you know, movement a lot of times when it comes to anything that's fitness related is we tend to, oh, I'm going to run a 5K or it's just something that's like athletic and it's, you know, all this stuff and it's got a goal and that goal is usually outside of us. And the difference with what I want to be able to talk about is why movement matters to you. Like I'm a little fire baby. And what happens with that is I need to be outside. I need to be hugging trees. I need to be walking around with bare feet. Now, Part of that also lends to my flexibility. And because I like to use my body in all these different ways, like I like to lift things, I like to go for long walks, I like to go for bike rides, uh, why I want to do that and why I need to do that, like maybe for you, it's, you know, you, you know we're getting into that grandmother age. Maybe you want to be around for... You know, you want to be able to lift up your, your grandchildren and play with them and, and enjoy your time with them, right? So that's really important to do. Um, and then the how part that we covered is that, um, you know, when we go and look at this, it's better to, to, you don't have to run. You don't ever have to run if you don't want to run. You do have to get up off your couch. One of the best things that we talked about, and I know Heather joined us last week, or on, on, sorry, last week on Sunday, um, was she was a belly dancer. And if you've ever met a belly dancer, they've got muscles, man, but they also, they don't look like your size zeros or your size twos or whatever the fashion is. So it's important when you get your why factor that it comes from the inside out, right? So that why you're moving, why you go for that walk. You don't want it to have to be a task. You don't want it to have to be something, oh, I have to do this, and you dread it. You want to be able to get your head around it so that it's something you enjoy doing, right? So like now, uh, and again, what we talked about is, is uh, you know, you can get up and, and dance, at a commercial break if you're watching TV or even between binging, you've got to get up every time and you got to dance to one song and make it a fast song, right? And uh, so that's the important stuff. So that's the how and the why that we talked about on Sunday. So uh, again, if you haven't done that part, I want you to, if you're going to join us for the next four weeks today and next Wednesday at seven o'clock right here, uh, we're going to be talking about the body in two different sections. The third week is going to be about the mind and how we, how can we, how can we look at things differently so that we can, you know, cause one thing too about going for a walk every day, for instance, is a lot of times it's like, Oh my God, we're going on the same place. It doesn't have to be the same place. You know, how do you embrace the mundane in a way that has you looking forward to it, right? I know a lot of you guys, you, you like my pictures of me walking in the same park. These are all pictures of the same park. And every time I'm in it, it's like, oh my God, I love this. Because, you know, this tree is now blooming. It's now that's easy. It's easier right now because everything's coming out. But I enjoy all four seasons and I enjoy everything about my park and how it changes. So that's 
we're going to deal with the mind in the third week. And then in the fourth week, we're going to deal with the spirit, right? And then the other thing is by the end of all this, you're going to have four weeks that by the end of the four weeks, then if you choose to do, you know, my aim is to hopefully get everybody to look at movement as something that they want to do, something that they look forward to doing, and that you can incorporate that into your life, right? Because a lot of times it's easy to be, you know, gung ho if you're, you know, if you've been doing it since day one, right? Like somebody that's been working out since they were 20, and they're 60, they've still been doing it their whole lives. I do know that for me, you're also helping me because, you know, many of you know that my little health issues sidelined me. But uh, today we're going to talk about the body and and how I looked at uh, my body in the past when it came to having me get really successful results in things like running, uh, you know, training for a half, half marathon. And then the great part is when I was a competitive paddler, I was actually tested every six weeks would be we would have this run test and um but so when i was doing anything that was like that i split it up into three things i split it up into my heart knowing what my heart when my heart felt comfortable where that edge was and where i could push it and getting back to the to the why that's because endurance was something that was important to me so maybe you don't want to run a you know increase your run time that's fine. It's still important to know what's going on with your heart. And, uh, and then the second part is your lungs, is being able to take in that oxygen and actually have your body utilize it in a way that's actually going to help you, that's actually going to, uh, you know, fuel your body. Um, and so that's the second part about the body that we're going to just briefly talk on. The biggest part is the muscles and fascia. So the fascia are things like, uh, you know, plantar fasciitis. It, sometimes we have, you, you know, issues in our hips. Oh, don't we love that when we get out of bed in the morning and it's like, ee, ee, ee. so, um, you know, that's like things like synovial fluid. As we get older, there's, part, you know, our cartilage might wear down, so on and so forth. So what we're going to do for the next week and the main topic of tonight is going to be really the muscle and the fascia. So, what happens with our body is there's a lot of people that don't necessarily know the difference between pain because you're injured and pain because you haven't used a muscle for a long time. Either way, whenever you're feeling any kind of uh, resistance or something that's, that's especially in, in the bottom half of your body, like here's my a plain example is a couple of weeks ago I did this... Uh, I was on a hill doing a, a park cleanup and I was in rubber boots. These were not very supportive and the bottom of my foot is still aching me. The other part is there's a part on the front of my shin that's aching me. So when you get anything that's on your shin or on the bottom of your foot, those are two key things that are asking you to slow it down. So. Uh, so this is, this is, and usually is your fascia or your, what leads to shin splints is anything on the front of your shin. So things like not necessarily just yoga, and I'm going to give a very wonderful example that I got today. It's called Eccentrix TV and it's on PBS. And this woman is, used to be a dancer and... Uh, I'm going to put a link in the on the page where this is posted. But what she does is she does it from a dancer standpoint. So you're starting from the feet up, right? So your feet need to be strong. So here's question number one. Do you walk around in bare feet a lot? Okay. And now that we're getting nicer weather, do you walk around out on the grass bare feet a lot? Okay. So why is this important? Number one, connecting with the earth is always important, getting that kind of energy. But number two, you want those muscles in your feet to be able to, to feel and move and, and work. Um, the other thing is, 
you know, there's things like doing if if you can squat, if you can, if you can't do things like that, that's okay too. But if you, you part of what I want to encourage you to do is, if there's a yoga program, there's tons of free stuff on YouTube. Um, there's a lot more of uh, like this classic TV. I just or this classic, sorry, oh, I forgot the name, but it's Eccentrix TV. This woman was a dancer, and she's beautiful because she talks about dynamic stretching. So back in the day uh, when I was teaching aerobics, it was all, oh, we're going to hold this, and we're going to hold that, and God knows that that can actually lead to injury, which is why there's a lot more what's called dynamic stretching now. So that's why I keep talking about dancing. Even if you're only dancing, you know, whether it's fox trotting by yourself around the living room to La La Land or getting a soca groove going on. Um, I like to do when I'm walking, I like to do a soca walk, right? Where I take you take your hip, your the the your hip joints and you actually do like a figure eight. So what does this look like? Okay, this I'm, I hope you can see this here. So it's like when you're walking, you're going to exaggerate that your hips are moving forward and then they can also move up and down. I don't know if you can see this as well. And uh, but I hope that makes sense. So so say you go out for a walk. It's the first day because we've got between now and next week. And as you're walking, I want you to be conscious of how do my feet feel? How do my feet feel when they when they come down on the ground? How do my knees feel? How do my ankles feel? Do they feel supple? Do they feel tight? And just get to know for this week, I just want you to get to know your muscles. I want you to get to know your body. I want you to actually take a little list of where are the places where you might be holding more tension. And, you know, because the, the one thing that we don't do, and you might go do a mindfulness class or an awareness class or even a body awareness class, but a lot of times, like, these things are all great, and I totally encourage that. The purpose of this is not that. I am not the expert in everything to everyone. But what I want you to do is take this week, and the reason I like walking or even dancing is when you're doing that, I want you to go through and go, okay, starting from the feet up, what's this feel like? Okay, where do I have tightness? Where do I have, ow, I have a little bit of a pain there. And, and write down the places that, uh, that you're aware of, or maybe even do like a little journal of what it felt like to walk. And, and by journal, I don't mean like three hours, three pages. I just mean like, you know, oh, uh, today my hips felt tight like when I started walking every morning right when I started that my hips were screaming at me because they're going hey what are you doing you haven't been doing anything for a long time so the thing is you have to be able to do at least two or three days before your body starts going oh this is what we're gonna do every day and then the other part is is that it, it's it's going to start loosening up so now my hips they, they move really good. So in my like exercise note, and it's just a note, even if you just have a calendar somewhere, whatever, just jot down, just go, okay, uh, today, oh, the hips really felt good today. The second part, and I want you to do this for your whole body, right? I want you to start from the bottom and say you do 10 minutes, 15 minutes. As you're there, it doesn't matter how long, but I would like you to commit to a certain amount of time every day because that's going to be just, you just have to start something. If you don't start something, you'll never get, you'll never get moving, right? So start with that, come all the way up, hips. The other thing is one of the biggest powerhouses, even when we were paddling is people, it's like, oh, you got to have strong arms. It's like, it's not about the arms. It's about the core. So the core is actually one of your strongest that's where your power comes from, right? If your core is strong and you're and and you get more flexibility in your hips, then that's when you can actually start doing more movement, right? But that also gives you an indicator of what areas you need to actually stretch on or you need to actually be able to, you know, maybe start okay, I need to look for a for a hip opener, that kind of that kind of a hip stretch thing. 
Or again, like this eccentrics TV where you can do something that just works on the connective tissue, right? Because I don't know about you guys, maybe you have some knee issues. You feel it in your knees when you walk, right? So um, as we get into our core, I want you to also just become aware as you're walking, how are you, how are you walking? Are you walking like this or are your shoulders up and back? Is your head pushing you forward or is your head up? And again, these are just small habits, small. It's not even habits. It's just an awareness to say, oh, how do I feel? And do a body scan, but do it as you're walking. Okay, so this is this is step one for this next week, this next seven days. Um, and then so the other two aspects of this. Um, I, I am going to talk about it from a walking standpoint because that's the one thing that everybody can do right now, um, I, I think. Basically, if you can't, let me know. You can also, again, dance in between commercial breaks. That's two minutes at a time. You do two minutes at a time, it's the same thing. As you're dancing, do you feel it in your hips? Do you feel it in your feet? What does it feel like if you don't walk around with bare feet commonly? How does that feel for you? Right. So because part of what I want this to be is you getting a roadmap to this. So we've got our posture. We've got our muscles. Maybe we slouch our shoulders because that's what we're doing when we're sitting at a desk. So, again, this is going to become awareness of how we use our body. Right. So or how we, you know, do you store tension in your neck? Is your jaw always tight? You know, these are things that I just want you to become aware of, right? And actually, uh, if uh, if you're interested, please let me know and I'll give you my introduction to silence meditation, which literally is a, a full body relaxation, like stress release, uh, tension release, and then it's got like three minutes of silence in the middle of this, right? Yes, 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 core strength really matters. We're, and next week, I'm going to get into a few little tips on core, core strength and how we can become aware of it. The second part that I want you to do is I want you to pick a path that is going to allow you to see your progress just because if you do a 15-minute walk, is there at least one hill in there, one up and down hill? Um, or more like, you know, the, the one thing that we, that we do a lot of times as little humans, and we know that we're not, you know, hip and into everything all at the same time is we tend to go and we look for the easiest route. And this is not what we're going to do. Mind you, I'm not asking you to do like a trek that's going up a hill, but what I would like you to do is actually pick a route where you can, hopefully there's a little part where you can start judging what does my heart feel like right now like is my heart beating really fast am i winded can my breath keep up with this because you know that's a part of it is your lungs and again um just send me your email address and i will give you that th this meditation i it, i also have this little bit about deep about breathing because a lot of us we breathe up here so one of the things let's just do a little sample right now I want you to actually just wherever you're sitting I want you to have a hand on your belly and a hand on your on your chest just above your chest and then I want you to just take a nice deep breath and release now did your bottom hand move did your did your belly move and if the answer is no don't worry about it Lots of people are in that place. Lots of people, they're what I call, it's, it's, it's like shallow breath because a lot of times if we're not using our lung capacity to what we need it to be, if we're not actually um, using our body to the point where it's like going, oh, I got to do some work here. That's great. And again, this gets into the core because the diaphragm down on the bottom, having all your muscles and, and, uh, and your rib cage be able to move that also allows you to, to get a deeper breath in so again this is an awareness thing one of the things that's really neat is you can do that also lying down on the ground and then just try just practice breathing to see if your hand didn't move i want you to actually take a breath and imagine it going down into your belly and you want to be able to see that belly move right so 
that's number one because we're getting to know our lungs and we're getting to know what it is that we are you know we're going to use our body the way it's it wants to be used right so the other thing that we do from there is we're going to feel our heart rate and uh, i talked a little bit on the other video about what your resting heart rate is and your resting heart rate actually one of the things that shows what kind of fitness level you have is the ability to you know say you make a little dash for something is how fast your body can come from a exertion to a resting you know from exertion how long does it take you to catch your breath those are the kinds of things that are subtle reminders and, and unfortunately if we don't use our body enough like every day then then it's like oh i do a little run it's like oh, oh my goodness i can't make it to the bus stop you know one of the things that heather said the other day is you know when all this is is done and over she wants to go travel but she wants to be able to go walking all day around the places that she wants to travel to so this is why our why factor it's like how do we want to use this body how do we want it to to work for us like if you're a gardener uh you know a lot of it you've got knee you've got feet definitely because you're down on your you're down on your your knees and you can be working you know your toes uh you know the one thing is the fascia on the bottom of the feet is usually so tight so uh you know if you want to dance it's also your feet it's your knees it's your hips for me i do want to get some endurance going um but your heart rate knowing your heart rate knowing when there's something that's out of the norm is also just a really good thing to have in general just from health wise like one of the reasons I used to love giving blood is because I could go in, I could find out if my iron was good, they would take your blood pressure, temperature and all that. And I would look at that as like a little mini checkup because your 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 um, blood pressure is a good way to find out what kind of what kind of shape you're in. So these are all things that we're gonna be doing sort of not all at once over the next week. And it's not like you can think of everything all the time, right? But I want you to just have little notes so it's like when I go for this 15 minutes, now you can do more than 15 minutes a day, you can do as much as you want. And the fun thing is, is that once you start doing this, once you start incorporating movement, your body's going to start going, oh, I like this. Oh, my back feels a little better when I move around. Oh, um, yeah, my core feels really good when I do this. This is exactly what we want to be able to do, right? Is we want to be able to get it so that this body, this body is our host, right? This body is, is what we need to go through life with. So how can I love this body? And, and this isn't like just taking bubble baths and stuff. It's like saying, you know, all these muscles, all the, like these lungs, these, this heart, they're here to beat, they're here to support us and they're here to, you know, to give us our best experience right but you have to be able to commit to taking care of it it's just like you know if you had a nice car in fact a lot of times we probably take better care of our cars than we do of our own bodies right and i know so let me just also clarify i've been at this point as i told on on sunday the first time i went into a fitness class an aerobics class i was at the back i didn't make it through the warm-up I was huffing and puffing and just now here's a here's a great example of what I've just been talking about is that my lungs couldn't deal with it my heart my legs my muscles were fine I was 20 something but my heart and my lungs were like oh, I thought I was gonna die right and so different things will matter to us more at this age like this is for everybody but it's like at this age, what it is, is we flexibility is almost more important than endurance. Like it doesn't matter that you can run a five minute kilometer. It does matter that you can, you know, that there's some flexibility in your hips because that's going to prevent, heart, you know, back aches. That's going to allow you to, to do more movement. That's going to allow you to, you know, to, to move and to, and to do all those things that you want to do. You know, I did talk about the fact that my mother couldn't lift up her granddaughter because she, she, her body was, she was tiny anyway. But as soon as she started losing her muscle mass, like especially after retirement, 
she couldn't she physically couldn't lift her so this is this these are real things that happen right and the thing is we don't have to be you know you don't have to be doing full-on calisthenics although next week we will be talking about body weight exercises right because we are actually we have everything that we need right here and this is a big lesson that i learned when i again i went to uh, I moved to the Caribbean. Uh, I couldn't go out by myself for whatever reasons. We're not going to get into that. But everything that I did was at a gym. I, I, need to, I needed to use this workout. I needed to do, you know, I, I, I taught aerobics. So I had to have like a big stereo system. And, you know, everything that I did mentally was in that gym. So that's why one of the things that I absolutely did is that I started getting, okay, well, I have the ocean here. I'm going to swim you know, on the weekends, I'm going to swim as often as I can. You know, I took scuba lessons, you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, it was a big blow to my psyche because it's like, oh, well, I can't, you know, like you don't want your movement to be restricted by activities that are outside of what you have right now. That's why I like dancing. You can hum to yourself and do a dance, you know, um, and, and that's the important part is that is that. What you look at is like, okay, I've been sitting down for an hour. I'm going to get up and move. You know, the, the little soca walk that I talk about is because, uh, you know, I, I had that music on my, on my uh, headphones one day. And most of the time, oh, and let me just mention one other quick thing. Whatever you're doing over the next week, try not to include anybody else in it. So if there's... 15 minutes that you are going to give, or it can be an hour, whatever, it's up to you. If you are just trying to get to know yourself, your body, your stuff, try, you know, the one thing that I, that I see is, especially with running is we've well, got running buddies and it's like, it's great to have running buddies as long as you both have the same philosophy, you know, when, when, um, you know, it's good that you want to be able to hang out with people. But part of this is, again, as I was saying about the gym, you don't want it so that, oh, well, if Frida's not there, I can't do this. So what I want you to be able to do here is make this so it's about you. It's for you. Then you can go once you've got this going on and it's and it's what you like to do, then you can include as many people as you want, as long as they're all on the same page. So that means like, you know, you don't have to all go at the same pace that you actually, you know, it's nice to do, you know, the, the community kind of stuff. But it's like, you know, with my running partner, Linda, back in the day, she was always faster than me. Even at my best time, she was still faster than me. Now, when I was actually at my peak, I was pretty close to her, but I was never going to be as fast as her. She just ran faster than me. Of course, she was also, you know, she's anyways. So we would go to a place together talk, talk, talk. We, okay, let's go. If we were doing a training run, it's different. We would set like a, a, maybe a slower, you know, if it was a long run, we would set a slower pace, but it's like, we would go, we would go to the runs themselves and we would start together and meet at the, the finish line together. And then we would still do the community part, but my run was my run and her run was her run. Okay. So, um, and, and I would also add on to that, um, again, if, if, if we have our headphones and we're used to this music and we're used to playing this music all the time, it's really good. And it does pump you up. It's more important to be able to be with you in your body. So like, I don't actually run with music or anything anymore. I don't, I don't necessarily, I listen to audio books when I walk. But I don't necessarily, yes, we did, Linda, I love you. Mm. So, but, but the one thing about your, your headphones and your music is you want to, again, if you don't have that for whatever reason, you don't want that to be something that's going to stop you from what you're doing. So when I would be running in the beginning, and you can do this even with walking, it doesn't matter because at the beginning, it's going to take a little bit more exertion. Right. So you're going to have like I would do breath is love, breath is life, inhale, exhale. And this was in my mind. Part of this is a mantra. Part of this makes this now a meditative process. 
So, and Linda Bennett is here. And if you guys want to learn some fabulous, she's doing these introduction to meditation classes, which are fabulous. But again, she's a meditation. She can train on meditation. I'm trying to give you a, a way of a, approaching movement that incorporates everything. Then if you want to take that fitness, you, you know, you want to take that to a fit level and you want to go out and you know, do run a 10K when we can do that again. Or maybe you find out that you do like running. Maybe you find out that you like paddling. We're coming into the, you know, kayak, canoe, you know, all that kind of stuff is coming out, right? So what we want to do with all that is you want to get it so that, okay, if I do want to go out kayaking one day, I want my body to be able to do that for longer than five minutes. So that is going to take a little bit of endurance. But you'll find... And back to the, the path that you're going to take, which is hopefully walking or something like that, you want to measure it. You want to be able to go along because the thing that's going to encourage you is that you are going to go and then you're going to notice, hey, you know what? I do the same distance in less time now. I do, you know, my heart doesn't feel like it's pounding out of my chest anymore. And, oh, you know what? Oh, I feel like I'm breathing better. And so these are the things that you want to become aware of. So even for the next week, um, I would just ask that whatever you're doing in regards to this challenge, should you choose to accept it, is to actually take this time to hang out with you and to do you and to find out what you like and what you do and how you feel. Okay? So... Um, that's about it in a nutshell right now. So this is body one. So next week, as we go through uh, a week of this, so to recap, what we want to do is we want to look at our body in three different ways. Our muscles, fascia, like the skeletal muscular part of it, our lungs and our heart. And we want to start feeling we just want to start feeling our body, basically. We want to be able to know, how does my heart feel when I'm out here? What's the difference between, okay, I can't push it anymore, and you shouldn't really be at this part, especially for this first week. You shouldn't be, <gasps> right? This is not where you should be. I want you to go for a stroll. If you have a Fitbit or anything like that, what's your resting heart rate? Can you notice the difference in your heart rate, in your body, without... You know, I mean, I get to the point now where I can tell you if my heart's beating at whatever, like 100 beats per minute or, you know, 140, 165. And it's not that you know that exactly. It's the difference that it's like, oh, yeah, OK, I feel my heart. And I want you to connect with that. Like, even if you're out walking, hand on the heart and just go, hey, baby, thank you. Thank you for supporting me. I mean, it beats on its own, man. Isn't that a miracle? The lungs breathe on their own, right? But this is, I mean, you know, this is, this is where we have to be able to connect with this beautiful, perfect vehicle that we have. It's perfect exactly where it is, exactly where you are. So the first week, we're going to get to know this body. We're going to set a path, hopefully some sort of walking, so that you'll actually be able to use this as a baseline. Um, it's not how fast you go. It's just the fact that you move. Okay, so this is, this is what we're doing. And again, do that for dancing, do that for anything. And here's the thing, play around, you know, play around. Uh, you know, you can do a high intensity interval training. You can do any of that stuff if that's where your body is. But I'm going from the place that we're going to start for the first week to just sort of say, okay, where am I? Where do I feel this in my body? And then also start a communication with your body. That's what this week is about. So if you have... Uh, again, Sunday nights at seven o'clock on our just talking show with Aisha and myself, uh, this week coming up, I will, we will be talking about movement for the whole month. So it's like you get two episodes a week, but the one on Sunday now is going to be more of a generic, uh, discussion. Whereas this is about the body. So next week, like on Sunday, if you have any questions that you want to ask, please let me know. I also, for those of you that are already in the Life Starts Now group, the Facebook group, what that is for is I want you to get in there and share with each other 
Um, you know, this is what I did today. I went for, for this walk. Oh, it was tough. Or it was great. You know, I posted my gosling picture today. Yeah, I don't know if you guys saw the tree that I walked into <laughs> when I was out on Sunday, which was hysterical. I thought it was funny. It didn't, it, it really got my attention at the time and thank God I wasn't going quickly. But um, I try to post every day that I go because really you guys are helping me because I know I need to be of service. And I need to get back into this because one day Miss Linda and I shall be running again uh, for sure. Um, and, and again, so probably the biggest thing right now is, is, is try to get your head when it comes to movement that it's just movement. It can be going up and down the stairs instead of taking the elevator. There's some of those things that you can do. I live in a condo. It's easy for me. If you live in a house, take some stairs, do some, you know, do a do a track around the around the house if that's where you are. If you have the opportunity to go outside, or if you're near that, please get outside because connecting to Mother Earth, that like just getting air outside doesn't matter where you are is really good. If you can be around green, anything, that's really good to do, right? So that's what this is about. Is really I want this. This is like a a basic. It's not a body 101. I am not going to be your trainer. I am not going to be, I, I will give you all the tips and tricks that I know of. Like next week, we're going to get into some of the things that I used when it came to training, uh, uh, when it came to training, especially in paddling where, you know, different areas of my body needed to be built up. So, um, join us next week and please let me know direct message me and i can send you a link and get you signed up in the facebook group and i look forward to you guys encouraging each other because that's the other thing is we all think that we're doing this on our own we've just been through an insane period we're still in it and so the thing is that we have to do is is take time just for us connect with ourselves and get to know ourselves right this is really sort of a gift right and and you have to you have to matter to yourself you have to matter to yourself you matter to me that's all i have to say about that okay i love you all i shall see you on sunday and uh and if not you can come right back here next week and uh it will be body part two and thank you very much for showing up and i love you all okay bye